Where's James? Hello, mate. <laughs> going to be doing a bit of coving today. It's been a little while since I've done some. It's not massively popular. The main house here has all got coving everywhere, so they want it in the extension as well. It's very minimal tools. I'm going to start by pinging some lines, but the first thing before I ping any lines is I need to find out on the coving I'm using what the distance is from the corner of the room down and across the ceiling, down the wall and across the ceiling, uh, where the coving lands. So 84 millimetres, and it shows you a little diagram of him measuring down the wall. Both projections down and across will be 84 millimetres. Rather than getting up into the corners of a tape measure and trying to mark it off every time, just makes sense to cut that. I know it's going to be exactly the same all the way around the room. So that is my first thing. I'm going to mark all the corners with this block. <laughs> my drill and my screws I'm just going to put the screw at the four points here in this corner and in the opposite corner I only need to do it in those two corners because I can tie a strip chalk line to that end and walk to the other end with it and hold it and ping it so I only need to do it opposites and that's then that's all you need to do then they can come out and they're done away with and we don't need them later on either because a lot of people think you stick it up and you have to put a nail or a screw underneath to hold it in we don't need to do that. I'm just going just into the plaster board. I don't need to go too deep, it's just literally to hold the line. And also if I keep it on that side of the line, once the, once the coving goes on, it fills that hole up as well, you don't see anything. So I'll just pull that screw until I know that that line's in line with my mark. The useful thing about using screws for this as opposed to nails is because we can leave the thread hanging out a bit, when we put our line around it, it naturally tightens up and keeps it against the seat. It's not going to keep slipping down. So when I start walking off down there, it's not going to end up two inches away from the ceiling. So what screws are you using there, James? Forge fast, every time. There's a reason for this big awkward manoeuvre. And it's because what you'll find on all coving, it'll be marked on one edge. So here, that's upside down for you, but it's a ceiling edge. And they've always got to be the same way. So. We'll always keep that to the ceiling. If you, if for any reason you've accidentally cut it upside down, you've got to keep them all upside down. But whichever way you do it, you've got to keep them all the same way because there's a fraction of difference in the in the cove, and it, it just won't match up properly on the corners if you don't if you switch them around. So I've got that whole pack ready. That's all sealed up, and I know that they're all the same way. I've been for a few packs already, and I've checked them, but I will still check every time I take one out. But what I want to do is have this piece of coving in front of me and I know that the edge furthest away is the ceiling edge and I'll always work with that in mind. Uh, which brings us on to our, this great little tool. There's a couple of different ways of uh, cutting coving. You can buy a coving mitre box. I have actually got one. I should have brought it up to show you what it looks like, but it pretty much looks like a mitre box, but it's a lot flatter. The coving lays flat and you've got to cut the saw on an angle similar to how you do this. But I prefer this, this method, number one, because it's cheaper, <laughs> 10 quid, which is great, you know, I'm quite tight, so that's good. And also, I find it a lot more accurate. And if you do, for any reason, have your corners are slightly on or out, this is so easy to adjust slightly. So if I, I, it just lays on the, on the cornice like that, literally, it tucks over that corner there and there. And if you've got the smaller cornice, the 90 mil one, then it fits on those parts there. But say for example, I've put that on there and our saw runs nice, it runs down that 
if our corner was slightly out and I needed to, if I offered it up and there was a gap of say five millimeters at the top and it was touching at the bottom, I can put that piece back on there. If I know I've got a five, milli, five millimeters to come in there, I can just literally move that around like that, hold it in position and then recut it like that. It's so easy to do. It's just, it's just ideal for it. It doesn't take up any space in the van. You know, can tuck right in the corner. Make sure you get the metal one. They do a plastic one as well, but that's just a bit flimsy. You've got to go for the metal one. You need a little bit of pressure on that just to hold it in. It pushes very slightly into the, into the board itself. And I like to keep my finger against the side of the saw blade. No pressure on it, just let the saw run through, keep it leaning. Just keep pushing it backwards and forwards and that's it. And you'll know when you're through, because it does that. There we go. As I'm into recycling, I've used our 84mm block that I'm now using as a sanding block. <laughs> So shortly available on eBay. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, I'd like to have a bit of sandpaper. This is 60 grit, but it's more like uh, 30 now. Oh, no, <laughs> there's not many grits left. No, it's, it's good. So um, so basically, what I do, where the saws run through, the, and it's it's just brought up the face of the paper on this uh, on this plaster coating. So just with your thumb, just ease it back over, and then with your sanding block. You just want to take that off, just like that. It's important that you're running back, not, off, not yeah. upwards. Yes, it keep running away, and it will, it will. Might not do it first time, but it will eventually get rid of that paper, that furry bit. We just don't want that little furry bit of paper hanging over the edge, because <sighs> once you get adhesive and water near it, it just fluffs up. So we want a nice, crisp, sharp edge. So there we go. That's our first one there. So. On the other end, I'm going to do another mitre cut. I don't want, I'm not going to butt the two together because it never really works that well. It looks awful. Um, they don't, depending on your walls and your ceilings, it's, it is actually quite difficult to get them to marry up perfectly. So the best, the best way to do it is to put um, a compound mitre cut. I'm going to cut it this way because it leaves it open for the next piece to sit on top of it. And because I know the room is longer than this piece, I haven't had to do any measuring. The difficulty is, is knowing where the light's coming from sometimes, because yeah. if, for example, in here we've got down lighters, yeah, yeah. Uh, there wouldn't be, a, there's not a lamp standing in the corner of the bathroom. Uh, but yeah, that does make sense. And obviously you think about where your windows are, but again, the sun moves around mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily pointing straight up at the ceiling. So ideally you'd want it cut away from sight. So rather than necessarily light. So we walk into the room here, you know, it's, you want it sort of cut the opposite way, but yeah. in this case, I'll, I'm more concerned about getting this external mitre right because that's they're the important ones. They when they're wrong, they look terrible. When we cut the other piece that matches up to it, I want it to fit like that. But in reality, it's probably going to be slightly off, perhaps slightly tipped one way or the other. We can use a bit of the adhesive. We spread it in, just let it go off just for a, a minute or so, if that, and then we put a brush with a bit of water on it, and we just brush it in. I put the longest parts in first and then I fill in the small bits at the end. And the main reason for that is because once you've mixed up, and I only ever use um, bagged, you know, dry mix that you have to mix up yourself. I don't use the pre-mixed stuff, which is the reason I don't need to use screws or nails in it. Because for some reason, it doesn't seem to have the same suction and grab as the stuff that you mix up. That other stuff, as soon as you put it on there, it's, it's starting to go off straight away and it just pulls it straight in. So you don't get a great deal of time. I think you get about 45 minutes. You'll see as we're going on and we're putting it on and then you've got to move to the next bit and because you're working above your head, things do take a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, so I, what I do is I mix up enough to do the big parts, get all them bits on, then I can go around with my smaller parts, measuring them, cutting them, getting them to fit nicely, get them all laid out. Then I'll do a final mix and put all the small bits on. So our second piece, uh, I'm going to go again for one that I haven't got a measure, which will be on the other opposite long wall. Let me just check we've got our ceiling edge there, that's good. So this, this is even easier to work out in your head because I'm facing that wall now, so I can, I can quite clearly see. If it helps you could turn the whole piece around and face whichever wall you're doing if you don't do it that often. So we're going internal. Um, what I like about this as well, actually, as opposed to the um, mitre box, the mitre box has got two different 
cuts on it, but it's actually, <laughs> it's, it's got two cuts, but it's actually four cuts because you've got two internals and two externals. So you have to work out which one you're doing, if it's that way, or if you've got to flip the box around and do it that, you know, it's quite, it can do your head in. It's actually written on the box. Just by looking at it, you can work it out visually straight away. When that's on there, I know if I cut that through that way, that's going to be an internal mitre for a right hand end. If I do it on that way, it's the internal mitre on the left hand end. If I move that end to the left hand end of the coven and put that cut, that cut, sorry, it's, <laughs> it's then the external mitre for the left hand end and then you know, vice versa, the opposite way around. So, but it, it's quite easy. It really does. It doesn't take a lot of thought into working out which angle it's going to be. Um, it's just I, I found with those boxes, even after doing it loads of times, I still have to look at it. Think, hang on a minute, I'm, have I got the box the right way round? And their, their big selling point on the boxes is that you all you've got to do is turn the box round. You don't even got to walk to the other end or this, that, and the other. But I don't buy it. This is cheaper. We're going to do it as though we were cutting into two internal corners, but that will be our compound mitre for our piece to join on. If you're pushing too hard, it's wrong. You end up going all over the place. It's nice and easy to cut, it's a soft material. This one, I'm going to call this sink, because the sink's going on that wall. Basin. Or basin. You're right, actually. We're not in a kitchen, are we? We're in a bathroom. I'm a plumber, mate. I'm Sorry, a plumber. Mate. There's Sorry. always that sink-basin argument. Basin. That... Oh, hang on. Sorry, no. Double basin. Oh. Oh. So, yeah. so that one, we'll call this one window, then. Two, four, six, eight. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> right, two, four, six, eight. I'm not going to cut it to that. It's a little bit too tight. That's the actual type measurement, but um, because what you've got to remember is when that piece goes on and that piece goes on, they've got a bit of adhesive behind them, you know, anything up to three or four millimetres, depending on how bad your wall is. So what I generally do is I'll probably knock about four mil off, maybe five mil, because I like to keep them tight. I mean, I know these walls are good, so I'm probably getting away with about two millimetres of uh, adhesive behind. So if I take five millimetres off, then we're covered. And if there is, you know, a slight gap when we put our internal mitres together, again, we can fill that with um, the adhesive and we can brush it in. You know, we're going to be pretty good. Because I'll, I'll show you again, when we're doing, uh, cutting our small pieces against that one, I've got a lot of room to adjust it. I can cut a little bit off until it's right, then I can get my other mitre right, but we'll see that a bit later. So. So again, we've got two uh, internal mitres and our ceiling edge there. Right, our measurement is going to be from this very, the extremity here, right on this point here, because that is going to tuck right into the, touch that wall, because this is our, this is our wall edge, ceiling edge. All they're just going to be against the wall, so I'm measuring from there, and my measurement is going to be to the opposite end. What I need to do when I put this on, okay, so that's that's our point, that's our measurement to our opposite wall at the opposite end, uh, and I want this because this doesn't quite reach to the end. There, yeah, I need to make sure that that yeah. is in line with it. So I'll either use the saw or something flat against there. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. I'm just on the line, but in fact I want to be slightly over. Yeah, so by the time my saw cuts through there, we're pretty much bang on that line. I should keep a bit of sandpaper at either end really, shouldn't I? <laughs> save me a bit of time. Right, so because this one is cut between two fixed points, I'm just going to try this one dry. Okay, so that's in there. How far are we off of that? So now we're going for the last big cut, uh, which has got an internal and an external, and it's measured. 
2136. Right, 2136. Now, in this case, I'm not going to take anything off. In fact, I'm going to add a little bit. Because the reason I wouldn't take anything off is because the amount of adhesive that's on the piece on that wall is obviously going to push it over a little bit. But that will account for the amount of adhesive that's going on here, which will push that one over a bit as well. But what I'm going to do is I'll probably, I'm going to add one millimetre because I'm feeling generous. So I'm going to make it 2137. And what it means is when I come to put this piece in, I've got a little bit of play. If, it, you know, if, if I need to adjust that slightly, if that's not 100% 90 degrees there, I've got a little bit of adjustment. I've probably got up to about three millimetres by the time I've added that one. What if your corners are not at 90 degrees? Now I'm talking about a 90 degree corner that should be, but mm. it's maybe five mil out, say. Well, it's the, the good thing about coving over skirting is that it's such a soft material and it's a lot more forgiving uh, in situations like that. So, you know, if the worst case obviously if, is if your, your 90 degrees is open and yeah. then you've got a great big gap. You can trim it right down, take the back right away until, right. until you've just got a front point touching. So if, if it meant the top and the bottom touching, to start with and then you can make it up with adhesive in the middle you can get a small tool brush and water and you just keep working it and even if it comes down to if it's getting too much walk away let it dry come back the next day with some filler there's sandpaper you know it's okay this we're not talking about professionals so don't, don't start slating me for saying stuff like that we're talking about homeowners that want to have a go so you know it's not it's not always going to work first time and you know Nine times out of ten, it doesn't work first time, um, especially if it's something you're not used to doing. But with this stuff, it, it, like I say, it's very forgiving, and then you've got loads of options afterwards. If it doesn't quite go to plan at first, as long as you've got the bulk of it, you know, up right, and the corners are a little bit iffy, you can work with it a little bit. In this case, I'm going to cut the internal mitre first because it will help us with measuring. I'll show you why. So this is our internal mitre, which is going up to the right hand side there, which is coming across to an external mitre. And I've cut that one first because it's going to make measuring it a whole lot easier. So basically now I've got a nice point there that I can hook my tape measure over and I can measure down to what will be exactly like that, our external mitre. So if I'd have cut that one first, I'd be measuring from that point there, not, not that one, I'd be measuring from there which would make it really difficult, trying to, especially if you're on your own, trying to hold a tape measure on there, walk down the other end and mark it. It's never going to happen really, is it? you just got to make a pig's ear of it. Five, six, seven. It's funny, you do all these videos, you and Daniel doing really intricate jobs, and the only question people have got is, what pencil is that? What pencil is that? <laughs> Shall and I tell them? <laughs> Pick a dry, long life, automated pencil. There you go. Because there's another one, isn't there? There's Tracer yeah. as well, that's another one. Um, I, don't, I quite like this one, and they do, they do a slightly bigger one as well, which I've got for, which has got a big fat flat lid on it for roofing, yeah. which is really good. Um, but this is nice for small stuff, and also because it's got that thinner part there, you can get it into mark holes. Because I'm working on the other side of the line this time, I need to allow for a saw's width onto that line. So you see, I'm sort of. Oh, I'm just on it. I could come this way to my left slightly. But you see, I'm not quite on the line. I don't want to be bang on that line or I'll be taking that out and then I'll be too short. So, so probably enough to get a saw blade down there. I could have done the 100 mil trick and done it 100 mil too short, but we're looking. Okay. Right, we're going to cut our small bits in now. Now we've got the bulk of the room done. Now all the big stuff's up, we can relax a little bit more than we were relaxed already. I'm going to relax a little bit more now. So we're going to just take some measurements because they're nice and short, they're easy to measure, you can be more accurate rather than trying to 
struggle with a tape at, at length. Now I'm going to measure them and I'm going to cut them at pretty much the tight measurement. One at a time, I'll go back round and I'll offer them up and then see if there needs any adjustment on them because they're going to be slightly long measuring them tight so we, we can cut a little bit off and that's fine. So we'll do all of them one at a time. Once we're happy that the joints are good, they're going to work nicely, then we'll mix up and it's just a case of sticking those last ones on. Oh, light's running out of battery there. So I just, made, I just made a schoolboy error, something that I was banging on about earlier, about checking the ceiling edge. And I've just picked up this short piece that, to cut one of the other sh smaller pieces. I plonked it on a bench and I cut the internal mitre ready to measure. And then I thought, hang on a minute, I didn't check if it was the top edge or not, the ceiling edge. And lo and behold, it wasn't. So I've used that edge instead of this one, ceiling edge. And they seem to, they've done quite well actually. They've got their stickers all the right way up, so you know yeah. it should be that way up. So I've now cut that on the wrong end, upside down, but it just goes to show that now I've cut that, that that's it doesn't fit anywhere, it's useless. It, if I put it up into an internal corner, it's not gonna match anything because it's the top's longer. It's not gonna do an external mitre because that's cut out that way and not that way. So once you've cut it wrong, the wrong way up, it's, it's totally useless. Do you know what, that's, that's answered something that's baffled me because I've done a bit of this in the past and I thought, why doesn't that one fit? And that's obviously the reason. Oh, let's have some answers in the comments. Why does it have a top and bottom edge? I really can't figure that one out. See that edge is thinner, and that's fatter. They look so similar, that you cut that mitre and they just don't match up in no, the corner no, at no. all. It's funny. Uh, okay, so fat edge is ceiling edge. I spent my life looking at problems that I don't need to solve. <laughs> like, how deep would the sea be if it wasn't for sponges? <laughs> Did you see that documentary the other night on holding ships together? No. It was riveting. Oh my days. <laughs> <laughs> this wall's slightly out oh, there. Could just be a plaster issue. I mean, we've got about a two millimetre gap just slightly in the middle there, which we can easily deal with. It's perfect off the wall there, so happy with that one. Those, mate. I think I'm happy with that. Difficult it was when I had a little go at it. <laughs> you chose the hardest thing, I was sitting on a wooden scaffold pole. <laughs> well, I like a challenge, what can I, can I say? bottom there about four or five mil so I can take four or five mil off at the top down to nothing yeah. 
Like I say, you can't do that in a mitre box. Exactly. Just gives you a little bit more scope for things being out, and they are out, they're often out. They're always out. <laughs> it to the furthest point. So, bit proud and we'll brush that off in a minute. should just swap over. Right, four, three, it's not Thunderbirds. The second time today that I've mentioned Thunderbirds. Oh yeah? Yeah. That's it, mate. That's it. That's the unofficial way to put COVID up. <laughs> Good afternoon's work, yeah, again. <laughs> and it's Friday. You're yeah. going off to the bosom of your family. Yeah, and a nice cold beer. And I'm going digging a cellar out. Well, you bring it on yourself, mate. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Stop offering. <laughs> My daughter, what can I do? Yeah, I know. It's a shame, isn't it? Yeah, have you got a few kids, mate? I oh, know. I'm well, dreading the day that it comes. <laughs> I'm trying to retire before they've got their own houses. <laughs> <laughs>